All right, so a lot of people have asked a lot of questions about the viewfinder that's in Betty Edwards' drawing on the right side of the brain. So I got this book and it came with, I'll show you. When I ordered it, um, there was an option on Amazon that came with a workbook and the workbook has some of the viewfinder exercises in it. So this might be helpful. I haven't started it yet, but um, it actually has um, the rectangles for, uh, well, that, I mean, that's kind of easy, but it does have the markings already. So you, if you're really intimidated about where to start, uh, this might be helpful because it's going to uh, walk you through and then have, uh, you don't have to like, go away and like get all the supplies um, like rulers and things I mean a lot of it's just right here for you you might still need a ruler but they've got it set up for you so you don't have to do as much you finder is I had a, a frame that came with a piece that already had the edges sanded down and curved so they don't cut you I don't know if you can see that it's almost worse Maybe you can see it here that they're like curved, so they're not sharp at all. But a lot of times, if you get a cut piece of glass, it's gonna be sharp and it might cut you. So you can sand it, and you probably don't wanna use a power sander because you might break it, and that could be dangerous. Use safety glasses either way, um, but probably just sanding by hand with a piece of sandpaper would be the best way to sand the edges down. So this is something I got from the art store. I ordered it online. I didn't know it would come like this. It's a piece, piece of plexiglass. It's a lot lighter. So this is something I was gonna use for a viewfinder, but it comes with the this paper on it and I don't know how to get it off, but I found that you use um, heat to get it off. So I was gonna try that. This is a heat gun. So you could also use a hair dryer. This gets a little hotter than a hair dryer. We'll see if heating it up, what happens. All right, so this side seems rougher than this side. So this is gonna be my drawing side because I don't know um, if this side will erase as well. So I'm gonna use the shiny side. I think it will definitely wipe off better. You can see the difference in the shine besides matte. So these are binder clips, small binder clips. You don't have to, they come in different colors. Um, black in all colors. Okay, so the binder clips, you just kind of pinch them on and then fold them over like that, and that holds your uh, frame on. My plexiglass viewfinder. So I have a glass viewfinder and a plexiglass one. This is another viewfinder I have that's a brand called Viewcatcher. I got it at the art store. And uh, so it's got these tiny little holes, which are good for finding values. You just uh, see how you just put one section next to, or one color um, next to the one next to it. And then you can see it kind of isolates the values. And then you can make either a square or different rectangles. So, um, I mean, it's kind of tiny, so it's going to work a little differently, but you could definitely uh, use this. And it's so lightweight that you can, like, clip it onto something so it's hands-free if you have a little, uh, some sort of 
clip that you can use. All right, so I am just going to try again the drawing of your hand directly on the viewfinder with this new plexiglass viewfinder. And so I'm just copying the measurements onto my paper. So that's another nice thing about the workbook is you've already got it all marked out for you. You can skip this stuff. Um, but you're limited that you can only do it once. So, uh, you know, this is probably the drawback to the uh, workbook is you only get one chance in the book. So, uh, if you want to do it again, you have to just make make it yourself. Um, unless you can photocopy the page, maybe. Um, there's probably no reason you can't do that for you if it's just for yourself. If you bought the book, so. Uh, yeah, just an option. It's a weird measurement too. It's not like five by seven. It's like, I don't know if it would work better in centimeters, but it's like a weird fraction. Uh, trying to find the center of it is giving me a little bit of a headache there. But these proportions, I mean, this seems kind of monotonous, but this is pretty important or is everything's going to be off. And I tend to want to skip steps with this or cooking or sewing or anything and if it's those attention to details especially in the preparation process just like Abraham Lincoln I don't know if this quote is true to him or someone else but there was a quote I remember if I had seven hours to cut down a tree I'd spend six of them sharpening my axe and that seems what it's like with even art, like the more prepared you are, um, the better the actual work is going to go. So, uh, one thing about these binder clips is they kind of get in the way for the viewfinder, but I haven't found a better option. If you can think of one, uh, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear anybody else's experience. And I've had people kind of tell me that I should have been more prepared, but please know this is just me and my experience. And so I'm not some expert in these viewfinders. Um, I didn't write the book by Betty Edwards. So um, this is just my experience. So uh, please keep that in mind. And maybe this isn't the best video for you if you're looking for some expert advice on viewfinders and um, you know maybe maybe Betty will come out with some videos I don't know I haven't seen her on here but uh, maybe someone else has a little more experience in these viewfinders uh, but this is my experience and all right we're going to Get that on there with my erasable marker and another thing I notice about the plexiglass and there might be a better brand or uh, option because it's kind of frosted as you can see so the glass is you can see more with the glass so this is fine when it's right up next to my hand but if I were trying to paint something across the room with this plexiglass viewfinder that I'm not going to be able to see much detail. The good thing might be is if I'm just looking for basic details uh, it could be nice because it's only going to give me shapes and values and kind of eliminate the details so maybe that would actually be a strength of this more frosted glass and my hand I've noticed is starting to heat up the plexiglass and condensate on it I don't know if you can see that around my fingers that are touching the glass that's kind of funny um, and it might look like it's off because I am at a different view than you're seeing so that's one reason and one thing that's super important for this part is to keep one eye closed uh, so that 
everything's not distorted. If you have both eyes open, then you're going to be uh, kind of like two perspectives and you only want one perspective. So one eye open. And um, I'm using straight lines and the best way to start uh, getting your lines right is to go to the lines that you have on the the viewfinder, the crisscross that you made, and find out where the lines of your hand intersect with the, uh, the lines on your viewfinder and mark those first and then start marking. I did use a lot of the negative space rules, so if I couldn't figure out in the section where an edge was, I would look at the negative space and try to figure it out from that. And that was really helpful. So now it says to copy everything. So again, we're going to cite everything back onto my paper and transfer it this way. Another way you could transfer it is just with some transfer paper. And I have a roll of that. And uh, the problem with that is you're limited to the size. So if you wanted to blow it up to a larger size, then the grid method I think is better because you can just double the measurements or triple, you know, you can just multiply them, the measurements onto a larger uh, working surface. Okay, so again, as you can tell, I'm kind of working my way along. If you think of maybe like a dot to dot coloring book when you were a kid. This is honestly no different than that. It's just that you're, um, the dots are kind of invisible and you have to uh, connect them. So it's like the dots are actually on the viewfinder and you have to go back and, and put them in. And it, again, it helps to go right to the lines and use those as your guide. I am probably doing this a little faster than you should. Uh, I tend to work very fast, so this is actually quite slow for me. Uh, and so I think it's good practice for me to slow down. And there's a time for painting fast and spontaneous, and there's a time for slowing down and getting your details right and going really deep into the right brain, which is going to be um, that slow, kind of monotonous detail work. And Betty Edwards says in the book, also again during this part, try to remember not to label like thumb, pinky, uh, knuckle, try not to think of those things while you're working because that's going to bring you back into the left brain and you're going to start um, thinking on the left side instead of the right side which is going to put you back in the left brain and you're going to start, uh, you're going to forget about drawing correctly, like drawing what you see and you're going to draw uh, what you think you see, which is not the way this works. We're trained, this is like a training for your brain. So I liked the lightweightness of the plexiglass and it was just really lightweight and the fact that it's probably not going to cut you. But I did find that it was kind of hard to remove this uh, ink. And or marker and I don't know if there's maybe a better brand of marker or maybe there's a more glossy plexiglass. This is the first piece I've ever tried but it certainly is way more effortless to remove as you can see the marker off of the glass.
I ended up spraying water on it and that removed the stubborn uh, remaining marker. So this would be the only drawback and I don't know if someone else has experience with the plexiglass who might have a suggestion. Um, like I said, this is my first time using the plexiglass. But I honestly think I prefer the regular glass that I have. It's working for me. So... So it's the next day and I'm going to try this again on my glass viewfinder. And instead of just doing the line drawing, I'm going to do the toned paper drawing. So uh, the toning of the paper will, uh, I did that earlier on my notebook, but uh, it kind of gives you well, Betty Edwards says a couple things about it that really stuck with me. And one was the first thing is that the tone paper takes away some of the intimidation of just um, putting down first marks on plain white paper. So when it's toned, um, that first stroke is kind of um, already been done for you. So uh, I do believe psychologically that can be um, helpful. And then uh, the next thing is that it really creates um, almost like a tactile experience while you're drawing. Instead of just the lines, you're going to be um, carving out forms by uh, shading and darkening, making heavy, thicker lines, and then lighter lines, wispy lines, and then uh, you'll even use your eraser to make highlights, so it's almost in a way like you're carving your paper. Um, it's another aspect to drawing, which is, I think, kind of exciting after the line drawing. So on the viewfinder, we're just doing the line drawing, but then when we go to the toned paper, um, it'll be a little different experience. We'll start with the lines, but you'll see on the toned paper, how it'll be a different experience. So there's an exercise in the workbook on setting ground and you basically just use the side of a graphite pencil. And so I actually have a bar or a brick of graphite, um, otherwise a round piece and I have it, it needs to be on a flat surface. That's why the right side of my page is not it's on top of a stack of paper, so you need to make sure it's even so you can get the coverage evenly onto your paper. And I'm just going a couple directions just to make sure it's not streaky. And then the last thing you'll do is just rub it and that'll kind of get off the extra so it's not like, you know, like powdered sugar, how you've got uh, a little extra powdered sugar. I don't know. You don't want it like making a dust when you pick up your paper. So, um, and then that'll kind of blend it also. And now I'm just going to, uh, they had marked the page, but I can hardly see the marks they made. So I am just using a straight edge and I might even have to refine the center mark because I can't see it. Or maybe I could, that's why I didn't mark it there. But yeah, I'm just going to put my plumb line, my um, horizontal and vertical line back on this uh, little, little, little. I'm going to put the lines back on this toned paper.
Okay, so um, now I'm going to, as you can see, I've got my hand on something dark. It's best to have it on light so you can see it very well. You're going to need to see not only the hand that you drew, but the lines so that you can use those as guides for copying it onto your, or transferring it, the drawing uh, by sight. You're going to be citing all these marks. And so that's what I'm doing. Uh, they, she, Betty says to also have your hand out. I didn't, I found that kind of confusing for me because it's in, my hand's in an odd, it's not at the same view. So I found it confusing to look at my hand while I'm copying this. I felt like I just, needed to put my hand down and focus on the lines right now. So I'm not sure exactly how for this part of it, uh, how important it is to have your hand out. I think the hand part comes back once you've got it transferred correctly, then I think having your hand out to find the fine details can be helpful. Just like when I'm drawing birds and then I'm like I forget the markings on the bird so I go back and look at a photo of the bird to see where the mark what exactly the markings are you know so I could see okay where is my hand shadowed or the, where is the light hitting my hand so I can put the highlights correct I can see that being important but just having it out while I'm trying to transfer it's for one thing, it's in a different position now, so it's going to be off. I'm trying trying to draw from my hand. I should just be focusing, I believe, on the drawing on my viewfinder at this point. And all these details, like I just did there, I don't think I did them in the right order. I think that I should be focusing just on the lines, um, and mainly the outline first which will be the outer edge and then some of the details like the fingernails or the wrinkles in my hand. And especially I marked darker, uh, I dug in the lines that are on the, the axis, the vertical or the horizontal lines so that I made sure those were placed correctly. Those are kind of like my guides. And I also, again, refer a lot to the negative space, especially from the corner going towards the center of the page. Um, I found that very helpful. Um, to If you're feeling lost in space, to just go out to the corners and work your way in um, as far as where in that graph uh, the line you're looking for would be. And then once you get those like now I've got a finger that's so I've got another little section and then I can use that as a guide for where these lines of the nails are so it's just kind of working your way around and I think that this is the part where you're in your right side of your brain because uh, it's just a practice really it's you don't want to be thinking about you know what you're going to make for dinner or um, you know what color my fingernails are or anything like that or again like Betty Edwards says don't think about the names of the body parts like pinky, thumb, wrist uh, just focus on the lines focus on the details that's why that super boring uh, paint or draw the wrinkles and maybe even the thumbprint of your hand um, you know for 20 minutes you know like super boring things like that are good practice for being in the right side of your brain this is not as good as my last drawing actually um, it's off and I think it's off because I was looking at my hand my real hand instead of the drawing so I feel like the one I did first is better than this but hey you have to start somewhere 
don't be too hard on yourself if yours doesn't turn out perfectly either. So this is supposed to be kind of, I think the fun part is erasing uh, the around what you just drew. That's kind of the carving or it's kind of like the painting now is really bringing the form more from a 2D to a 3D experience. So even though the drawing is not uh, correct, um, you still kind of get the idea. And so I just decided to keep going uh, with the exercise. And just seeing the effects of the tone paper. So even, like I said, the drawing is not perfect. I can still, uh, at right here I am trying to look for where the highlights are. And so this is where the hand, I think, uh, becomes most helpful is for uh, figuring out the shadows and the, the values on your drawing. Okay, so I do another experience experiment here and I just wanted to share it with you. It did not turn out very well because I'm just using my hand, no viewfinder. I think I had both eyes open. That was a mistake. So anyway, the whole thing is off. The hand um, <laughs> is not proportioned well. So um, definitely I think that instead of thinking as a viewfinder as a crutch, think of it as a tool. I mean, just like a hammer is a tool. You could say, oh, that's cheating. You used a hammer, you know? I mean, no one would say that nowadays. Oh, that's cheating. You used a hammer to put that nail on the wall. <laughs> so think of it as like a hammer, okay? And uh, even a lot of famous artists use viewfinders and tools uh, for a lot of their work uh, throughout their careers. So um, it's possible to, uh, with a lot of practice and experiment or experience, uh, get to the point where you don't need those tools. But um, don't think of them as like you have tra your training wheels on that are, uh, remember that they are there for, um, your benefit. 